Oh, hello there. I am Black Knight, broadcasting out the UK. Welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, I'm sure you know the drill. Thumbs up if you like what I talk about. Thumbs down if you don't. Share if you want somebody else to know the content. And you subscribe if you want to know when I'm going to put up another video. Anyway, I wanted to talk about this fella who got fined for having a cup of tea with his mate. Now... You have to ask yourself, how did they know? How did the old Bill know that this young man had gone to his mate's house for a cup of tea? To make it worse, when the old Bill turned up, the guy lied about the reason for being there. Now, does this mean that either the guy was drawing attention to himself when he turned up at his mate's house? Does it mean that, you know, he's not liked in the neighbourhood? Does it mean that you've got the little community snitches who are telling telling on everyone who comes into the house? Because the thing is, you can have a cup of tea, but just not in the house. You need to be in an open plan or an open area. You know, if that's the case, just tell your mate, look, um, fill a flask and I'll meet you down the park. Yes, it's a bit cold, put on something warm. Two of you, you have your flask, you go and have your cup of coffee, you distance yourself two metres, no fine. But going inside somebody else's house who's not in your bubble, who's not your support network and who you're not caring for and all that kind of jazz, it's not a good idea. Because regardless of how we think we can do it, there's somebody snitching. And that's what you have to bear in mind. There's somebody snitching. You know, yesterday, uh, my fellow and I, well, it was actually Saturday, we decided, well, I was going to go over to his place. But I was so bloody paranoid. I'm thinking, OK, he's my support bubble. Can get in the car, can go straight to his house. So I put on my, my little Bluetooth. Doesn't he make a detour, please? He needs some Eddos. So I'm like, what's bloody Eddos? He says they're, they're, they're like potatoes. He needs them for his soup. So I'm just like, so off he veers off to this shop. Now I'm thinking to myself, okay, the Eddos are essential for him. Are they essential for me? Are they essential essential for anyone who stops, stops the car and says, okay, where are you going and what are you buying? And I was in a kind of a dilemma. So not only there, he decides he wants to take some money out of the bank. So this is another detour. So what I'm trying to say is, is that this essential, well, going to the bank isn't essential. They consider that essential. So that's fine. But it's just like, it's just so bloody nerve wracking. You know, you always have to be thinking, if the police stop you, will they deem where you're going as essential travel. And I know I started off with this guy with a cup of tea, but that's the same, well, it's not the same thing because that was direct violation. But when you're kind of thinking about, um, they're saying keep your movements minimal, go from A to B. Okay, at the moment it's not that bad because they haven't got the army on the streets like they've got them in Liverpool. But it will reach that point where you've got army at certain um, entry points of certain areas and you're going to have to have a valid reason why you're going to, to get A, B, C, D and E and why it is essential to you. Now, is a nicely fragranced um, hand lotion. That might be essential to me. It might not be essential to them. They might think hand lotion is an essential item. It's only food. And drinks. So it was kind of, uh, and then thank God, well, I don't know if it's thank God, but you know, when you've got this Bluetooth on, it, it you know, the battery um, it uses up the battery. So my phone just crashed anyway. So the whole point of me allowing it to track and trace, just in case we need it in the future to say, okay, this is my support bubble, that evidence. So it was gone anyway, because that was the whole point of me turning it on. I wanted to make sure I could go and see my support bubble if I, you know, as and when. But it kind of failed me anyway, that system. 
But yeah, um, what else was I going to say? I wanted to keep these three short and sweet. Yeah, with the guy with the um, the tea, like I said, you're not allowed to meet with family and friends indoors. Okay, so I think... Yeah, what was interesting though, we went into a car park, we didn't have to pay. For the car park, they said because of COVID-19, they're not charging for the car parks. I'm not sure if that was just in the area that we were in or whether that is standard across the board or whether they assume that there's not going to be many people parking in in the in the car park so they don't need to monitor it, they don't need to charge. But I thought that was good. Um, I do know that as human beings, we do tend to rebel. Um, against rules and regulations. I mean, it's just our innate nature. Um, but, yeah, I am trying to be a good girl. I am trying. It is hard. But, yeah, and I was also wondering, you know, like, if, you, if you've got a partner and that partner's got a child and you, he asks you to accompany him to take his child back to his mum, which is in a different area, that would be essential for him, but would it be essential for me? Let me know your thoughts on that one. Because if you're a couple, do you then become a couple to take that child home? Or because I'm not his biological mother, is that then deemed non-essential? Is there anyone who could answer that for me? You know, this is just... Um, this is just an opinion because I guess they'll have their ways of monitoring this kind of stuff. Um, but I was just kind of thinking whether or not that would be deemed essential or non-essential. Anyway, let me know what you think. That's all for now. Bye-bye.